Sunset and Burning Leaves by Rev. Shusai, Chapter 14 What is the flavor of life? Life is very much like food and drink, in that it manifests flavors of great variety. The manner in which we develop the taste buds of our consciousness will determine the flavor of our lives. To one who is forever giving vent to strong emotions and passions, who is always crashing this way and that in search of new ventures and conquests, the flavor of life will be like that of heavy spices, rich liquors, and pungent sauces. Its colors will be the garish primary colors of a child's set of crayons. Such a life of strong flavor and blazing color is a wonderful thing to observe, and perhaps to sample but the wise person does not choose it for himself. He knows its pleasures to be fleeting and to contain the strong elements of unfulfilled desires and frustration. Such is the life of one who is entangled in dharmas without any awareness of the void. To one whose mind is lazy and who lives in ignorance of the true nature of experience, life is a tiresome thing to be tolerated and passed at best in boredom. To such a one, life is as tasteless as black bread and stale water, and as colorless as a shadow show thrown against a white screen. The wise man or woman does not crave such a life, knowing it to be the product of a mind that is lost in the void with no knowledge of the true nature of Dharma. The best flavor of life is like the delicate clear flavor and aroma of good tea. A taste for such a life is an acquired taste, which cannot be experienced until one's life has taken on many of T's characteristics, through the maturing and unfolding of the intuitive mind to the subtle beauty of all things. Chapter 15 The disciple of the way who appreciates the subtle flavor of tea will also realize the spiritual qualities of Shibusa. Shibusa in, quote, things is understatement, subtlety, quiet elegance, retiring beauty. Rich but muted colors have Shibusa. A great building that blends with and perfectly complements a natural landscape has Shibusa. Furniture of good wood with subtle grain and the rich glow of great age has Shibusa. One's life can also reflect Shibusa. An appreciation for Shibusa arises from the spiritual characteristic known as Wabi. Wabi is poverty of mind, and the application of Wabi in life is called Sabi. Wabi Sabi, inherent in the life of a disciple of the way, constitutes a perfect Dharma life. Wabi equates with the quiet mind which is at peace with itself and which ever flows in the pure, clear light of the realization of truth. Such a wabi mind is not encumbered with a great number of brightly colored thoughts which are constantly clashing and painful. The wabi mind, in constant subtle communion with the void, has need of few thoughts. And those few are simple and pure. The life of sabi is the result of the wabi mind. It is essentially a life of delicate simplicity. For an object to reflect sabi, it must show definite signs of subtle beauty, which is inherent in the ceaseless process of aging. For instance, new guilt is beautiful and flashing, but old guilt is lovely and glowing, its beauty enhanced by the patina and scars of the years. Sabi is the presence of death in life. It is the evidence of the eternal life-death combination. Thus, an ancient stone carving, which is rounded and smooth by the centuries and overgrown with moss and lichens, teaches us the impermanence of all compounded things. All things that show the evidence of their returning again to their original state embody the principle of Sabi.